Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And the people I thank you have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below the sheet to their sites. They are Rabbi Shalom Arush, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadi, Rabbi Daniel Asher, Nisik Barak Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jews for Duties, Rabbi David Asher, and Rabbi Ron Ruvain. As well, if you never checked out the channel before, I will have a link below to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this is related to the upcoming Parashah, Parashat parasha Mishpatim, and this is again from Rabbi Eli Mansur's uh, weekly parasha Insights. I call this Be Attached to Torah Wisdom. Also, so you know, this will also mention about Parsha Shkalim, or Shabbat Shkalim, but since we have two Adars this, this uh, year, par, uh, Shabbat Shkalim is not going to be till the second Adar, so hopefully you'll apply this for then. <laughs> okay, so one of the topics discussed in Parsha Mishpatim is liability for personal injury, which one causes to another person. The Torah requires a person who is responsible for another's physical injury to make several compensation payments, including virapo yirapei, meaning paying for his medical expenses. <coughs> Excuse me. There is a deeper meaning of this phrase, virapo yirapei, which is based on the t- teachings of the Arizal. In Kabbalistic thought, the letter yud is associated with chachma, wisdom. The Arizal taught that when a person is attached to Torah wisdom, <coughs> excuse me, then he is attached to the source of life and longevity. Likewise, the sages interpret the verse, Vizot HaTorah Asher Samoshe, meaning this is the Torah which Moshe plays, that's from Zavarim, as alluding to the fact that Torah is Sam Chaim, an elixir of life. When we cling to Torah, which is associated with the letter Yud, we sustain our lives and maintain our physical well-being. So the Arizal explains on this basis the verse in Tehillim, Hashem Yis Adenu Al Eres Devai. Hashem shall support him on his bed of illness. The word Devai has the same letters as Yud, and the word Eretz, has the same letters as the word eser, 10, the numerical value of the letter yud. How interesting, right? So a person falls ill when he loses his connection to the wisdom of Torah, which is associated with letter yud, which results in this letter, which would serve as the person's source of life and strength, being transformed into eris tzavai, a condition of illness, heaven forbid. So there you go. Stay attached to Torah and you avoid that. So this concept sheds new light on the phrase verapo yirape. The word yirape is the word rapo, heal, with the letter Yud added to it. So this alludes to the fact that a person is healed when he is connected to the letter Yud, to the wisdom of Torah, which is the source of life and well-being. So this notion is always also expressed in the mitzvah of Machas and HaShekel, the half-shekel donation which every member of B'nai Israel was required to make every year to the Beis HaMikdash. The annual collection of Machas and HaShekel began on Rosh HaChodesh Adar, and we therefore commemorate this mitzvah of reading the Torah's command of Machas and HaShekel on the Shabbos before Rosh HaChodesh Adar, which is a special Shabbos which we call Shabbat Shkalim. Um, so the Torah in Shemos 30, 13 writes that the shekel consists of 20 gura, which is a certain unit of weight, and thus the half shekel donation consisted of 10 gura. The Talmud Yishami Masechet Shkalim explains that Hashem commanded B'nai Israel to donate 10 gura to atone for the sin of the golden calf, which entailed a breach of all 10 commandments. So the 10 gura of the Machasidah shekel corresponds to the 10 commandments, all of which were transgressed at the time of the golden calf, a sin for which the Machasidah shekel comes to atone. So that's the bad. It balances things out, as you say. So the Ten Commandments, as Rav Sadia Gaon famously remarked, encapsulate the entire Torah. They are the blueprint or the skeleton of all 613 of the Torah's commands. So when B'nai Israel worshipped the golden calf, they violated the entire foundation of the Torah and were thus considered in violation of the entire Torah. In so doing, they broke their connection to Yud, to the wisdom of Torah. So, and for this reason, as our sages teach, they lost the gift of eternal life, which they received at the time of Matan Torah. So the angel of death became powerless when B'nai Israel received the Torah, and they were thus to have lived forever. But they became again susceptible to death when they worshipped the golden calf. As the wisdom of Torah is what sustains our life. Ki heim chayenu va'orech yameinu, as they said before, that, that they're our, 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 um, our source of life and longevity. Um, B'nai Israel lost his protection, their protection from death when they broke their connection to Torah by worshipping the calf. So this is why the Machzid HaShekel donation consists of 10 Gira. The stone nation is intended to rebuild our connection to Yud, the letter associated with the number 10, and which represents the wisdom of Torah. By reinforcing this connection, we reverse the disastrous consequences of the golden calf and become once again worthy of life, health, and joy. So the Mitzvah of Machzid HaShekel then reminds us of the vital importance of staying connected to Torah. <clears throat> we must always remember that the wisdom of Torah is the, quote, elixir of life, is what sustains us both physically and spiritually, and thus the intensive study of Torah must be a priority for us each and every day. Now, for men, yes, it's 100% a priority. For women, it's not necessary because they, it's, 
you know, they have other things they're involved with, with family, children, etc. But it doesn't mean women shouldn't do it. You know, you have time, you're busy. If you're cooking, you can put a, a CD on, a lecture on, on the phone, on the computer. There's no reason why you can't just listen to something. If nobody else is around and you can concentrate, even if you can't, you're still getting it. You still, your still neshama still takes it in. So I hope and pray that everyone will um, recognize that Torah is the elixir of life and to spend as much time as you can studying it and um, also being aware that this is very important in our lives and that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the building of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen and thank you for watching.